uh, just recently, um, and we got on the subject of uh, some who try to discredit this, and uh, I think one was Major Ed Dames, uh, but another was Richard Hoagland, who said, called Andrew nuts, or called you nuts, rather, and called uh, Alfred nuts, and, and, you know, I take offense to that, because, you know, you look at some of the things that these guys um, portray, and how can they go and call anybody else crazy, especially when they don't know enough about it? Well, I mean, you know, first, first there's denial, and then there's ad hominem attacks, and then the ad hominem attacks become vicious. Now, regarding Mr. Hoagland, I simply have to say that when I went public with my Mars findings, I was imagining that literally the dean of independent Mars anomaly research was going to rise to the full mantle of leadership in the Mars anomaly field, namely Richard Hoagland, and celebrate my findings. But what I've gotten from him, basically, is a constant barrage of disparagement that even has gone to the extent of not only him simultaneously calling me a kook and an intelligence operative, which is kind of inconsistent. I mean, are you crazy or are you a self-interested operative? But he has even done things like put my surname in lowercase letters in quotation marks as if to indicate I'm a non-person. And what's so ironic about that, I think Richard holds a BS in science. I hold a B.A. in history from UCLA. I earned a B.S. in advanced math under an operations research program under the Naval Postgraduate School that we didn't even report when we, when we graduated. So I earned two baccalaureates at UCLA as an undergrad, one of which is on my resume, the other of which is in Navy files because they were, they were working with civilians to prepare them be, to become Naval Intelligence officers in the event that we had another world war. That program has been going on at UCLA since World War II. I then went on to earn a law degree and an environmental law certificate at the nation's leading environmental law school, which is Northwestern School of Law of Lewis and Clark College in Portland, Oregon, and then earned two advanced degrees in environmental planning, one at Cal Poly SLO with uh, distinction and the other at Cambridge. I'm a published scholar in environmental planning and I, you know, I have, I have clearly enough, and I dare say more, educational preparation than Mr. Hoagland to evaluate what's on Mars. And in addition to that, in the early 1980s, I traveled there. And then in, 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 in the last decade, in 2008, I published the first work to show that Mars is inhabited. So what I find so preposterous is Mr. Hoagland's self-referential uh, assertion that somehow he possesses authority. You know, this is an individual who hasn't even been examining the rover data. And he's telling somebody far better educated than him, far more experienced in visiting Mars, and somebody who spent a year studying one NASA photograph to show the life that was in it. What's up? And I, I just find that ridiculous. But oh, he, I do too. To oh, no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, he continues to disparage me. I think what we have to ask is, why did this individual focus on me? You know, we have other Mars anomalists that are doing phenomenal work. We've got George J. Haas and William R. Sanders, who have established the Mayan Aztecan connection to some of the Mars ruins, the Mars artifacts that we can see from the satellite uh, data. We've got a brilliant independent anomalist at MarsAnomalyResearch.com, namely Joseph Skipper. Uh, we've got Paul Goodwin at Mars Uncensored on Facebook. We've got Andrew R. Steck in Pennsylvania doing his work on mining sites and that type of thing, that, things that are evident in the photographs. And then we have all of the anomalists that are working with me at the Mars Anomaly Research Society, Ross Curley, Louis Michael Reinhardt, um, and, and, and so forth. And so the question is, why is it that any time I make a pronouncement, Mr. Hoagland has to assert that I'm crazy, or I'm working for the CIA, or I don't exist. I consider that disinformation per se. I think it goes beyond ego, and it goes beyond pettiness. I believe that it is a script that is being played by some of the career disinformationists in the exopolitical community. And I think those include not just Mr. Hoagland, but Dr. Michael Sala and Stephen Bassett, because they've been playing the same game. Stephen Bassett has been going around stating that I'm a CIA agent sent to, to infiltrate and sabotage exopolitics as a movement. Well, 
I mean, for Christ's sake, I helped Alfred edit his book Exopolitics, the work that founded the discipline. I'm, I'm being entirely <laughs> transparent of my work for DARPA and the CIA. I'm trying to articulate what I did for the CIA on Mars. Isn't that a fit subject for the world's leading exopolitical theorists? Um, so, so, I think so. A, yeah, yeah, a really crazy game is being played here. Um, Michael Sala has been, conv- you know, has been repeatedly misspelling my name, Basagio, which I know from in ways that I can't really actually articulate here is actually the misspelling of my surname that appears in the CIA surveillance file of me that was begun when I was at UCLA and I was going to Mars for CIA, but simultaneously working as a journalist in Los Angeles. My, my, cert, my byline, my surname got misspelled in a number of articles that were editorials that I wrote for the UCLA Daily Bruin. And that misspelling has been in my CIA file since the early 1980s. Well, that's the spelling that Sal has been using. How is that? Okay, so I just want the, the name-calling and the disparagement to stop because, in fact, I have important information to share with the exopolitical community, not as a theorist but as a practitioner, not as somebody who has just studied NASA's data from Mars, but somebody who went there and somebody who brought forward Brett Stillings, who is a corroborating witness. How often in the paranormal and in parascience has somebody made a dramatic claim and brought along an eyewitness participant? That's what I've done in Brett Stillings. Brett Stillings, as far as I'm concerned, is an American hero. Brett just recently provided me information that was within his recall regarding our Mars experiences That's allowed me to turn a chapter on what happened to us beginning in 1980 uh, in the CIA's Mars Visitation Program. So maybe I can describe that tonight. But, you know, really the name calling has to end because, you know, the notion that we've been visiting our neighboring planet for 30 years is one of the critical issues in exopolitics. And it's much bigger than me. It's much bigger than Brett and some of the other people that were going up there. Um, Okay. Andrew, before you go into your uh, – your next segment here, I just want to comment on that and say that uh, I totally agree. Um, I can't speak on all the other uh, individuals uh, who you had brought up, but I can say firsthand with Richard Hoagland, I have found a lot of discrepancies in everything that he does. I, I found that he, he hides information. Uh, he, he does a lot of disinfo, um, and he does a, a big discredit to the truth movement, and uh, that's my opinion. And we just busted out a big story. Um, we've had people come forward uh, about Richard, and I looked into it. And you know what? Uh, you know, I tried to uh, ask him about this uh, just on a man-to-man level, and, and he ran for me, and he, uh, you know, he insulted me and, and just felt like he didn't need to answer it. And, uh, you know, now people are asking him questions. I well, think I, that he's yeah. still connected with NASA. I really do. Well, he was a NASA publicist, and it it was curious that when I published my paper, The Discovery of Life on Mars, in 2008, not from the perspective of of a Mars experience, but from the perspective of natural history, which was my goal in that paper, which was simply to frame the findings of what we could find in the NASA photographs, not talk about my background, because that would be just too far out, I thought, at that time. Mm -hmm. It was curious that everybody who attacked me had a link to NASA. Richard Hoagland had worked as a publicist. Ray Villard, who stated in on the Discovery Channel website, he stated, this is almost a a verbatim quote, he said, if Bashago says that there are these little leprechauns on Mars, why doesn't he show pictures of them in his papers? Well, I was. I mean, how ridiculous is that? That was was in a 3,000-word diatribe written with U.S. taxpayer dollars by Ray Villard when he was serving as the publicist for NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. He was disparaging a civilian who had published a paper with images of Martian humanoids in it, but he was trying to indirect what had happened. He was trying to steer people away from the truth by stating basically that I was a kook saying that there were these little creatures on Mars. I was showing them. I was showing, in fact, the image of the humanoid being on Solkovsky Ridge in NASA image PIA 10214 had been so highly prioritized by the CIA that my father first showed it to me in 1969. It had actually been retrieved from the future and brought back in time. 
So the true history of this is that NASA and the CIA have known since the late 60s that Mars is inhabited. By 1970, my father and I had an experience where Martian astronauts were actually in liaison with our uh, aeronautical uh, community that included you know, aerospace engineers like, like my dad. So you know, here we are 40 years later. My paper comes out, and the first five completely ridiculous attacks on me that didn't even cohere to what was in my paper were by current or former NASA personnel. At this point, I think what happened, I think the script that they handed Hoagland was, he's highly educated, he's highly articulate, he, ha he has the, the courage to speak the truth, say that he's crazy. That's the old Robertson panel script from 1953. Despair, public, subject those who are, who are affirming the existence of extraterrestrial life to public campaigns involving fear and ridicule. That was the diktat of the Robertson panel the Durant report of the CIA's Robertson panel of 1952-53. The other disparagement was, well, damn, what do, you, what do you know? He's showing up He's showing up under DARPA, CIA, Navy, Lanel, and Sandia, and NASA because of the, the, Mars, the Mars probes that we took. So what do we do with this guy? Oh, oh damn, he's a, he's a trial lawyer in good standing in Washington State. Oh, oh, geez, he's got degrees from UCLA and Cambridge. Let's say that he's working for the CIA, because everybody hates the CIA, right? They're the, they're the whipping boy. Okay, right. so I think that was the script, is on the one hand say he's crazy, and on the other hand say he's not to be trusted because he's CIA. Well, I've been talking about the agencies that I worked for since I began my truth campaign in 2004. I'm not hiding the fact that I was conscripted into a secret DARPA program as a child, that I was conscripted into a secret CIA program in my late teens. Because that's what happened. That's, that's the thrust of my truth campaign is to share with people what actually happened. Okay, so I think we have to be intelligent about this and recognize that the disinformation is not working, that these people might as well retire because their disinformation <laughs> on behalf of the cryptocracy, on behalf of the alphabet soup intelligence agencies like the CIA, like DARPA, like NASA is not working. I agree. And, you know, everybody who's tried to attack us um, for some of the stories we've come out with, uh, most recently with Richard Hoagland, it's all backfired on them because you cannot fight solid evidence. And that's, you know, and we would never uh, point the finger at somebody if we couldn't prove it. And, you know, so I, I hear you. You know, they might as well retire. You're right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's not working. We're, pay we're paying for their work, um, ultimately. Um, and, uh, you know, when I look at these older baby boomers who've been compromised um, with this regime of, of disinformation and sabotage of the truth movement, I, I, you know, I think of the phrase, you know, lead, follow, or get out of the way. That's right. Um, be, Absolutely. Because it's having a negative impact on our evolution as a society. There's no reason for this information to remain secret. The people of the United States and the people of the world deserve to know that we achieved time travel over 40 years ago, and they have a critical need to know that we have been placing U.S. personnel on Mars for over 30 years, 